Welcome to Chai with Manjula. Interconnected problems have interconnected solutions. Based on this belief, the organization on our program today has taken a multidimensional approach towards development work in India. The organization is AID, which stands for Association for India's Development. And our guest is Suchitra Ramaswamy, president of the Abelia chapter. Suchitra, good to see you. Oh, thanks for inviting me, uh, Manjula. It's a pleasure. Well, I'm looking forward to hearing about the work that AID is doing, especially here in the Bay Area. Yeah. Um, but before we go on, first tell me, how are the problems in India interconnected? Give us some examples. Sure. Uh, so, um, from my experience, uh, both working in India as well as uh, volunteering, volunteering here in the U.S., mm -hmm. what we have observed is... Uh, uh, when we try to remove, allevi alleviate poverty from any uh, family, it's not a uh, one-stop band-aid solution that can solve. Uh, so let's, uh, let's assume in that family the child is not going to school every day and you are trying to put the child back to school. Right. And uh, um, in a group of friends, we decide to uh, uh, you know, fund the uh, child's education. But what we later on realize is uh, the child's parents, uh, because they are farmers and because their uh, yield has not been good, uh, they are suffering from poverty and uh, they are unable to provide for meals for their uh, child. So what we see here is the livelihood of the family is suffering and the nutrition and health of the family is suffering. And uh, let's say one of the family members falls sick, they are unable to go to the hospital because of uh, you know, lack of um, money. So, e if we take one family uh, in India, a rural family, these are some of the problems that they face, and all the problems are interconnected. So, if you want to want to put the child back in school, uh, unless he gets proper nutrition and uh, his parents are uh, uh, you know able to uh, get regular income every month, it's mm -hmm. difficult for the uh, you know child to go back to school every day. Um, yeah. Unless, so um, they might do do that, but after some point of time, they they might want the child to work and provide a little bit, contribute to the family's income. Yes. So unless all the problems are co co mm -hmm. covered or mm -hmm. uh, you know attacked, I don't uh, see a solution where the family is going to have a sustainable solution for yeah. their problems. Yeah, you're right. They are all interwoven, and it's a vicious cycle that yes. millions and millions of people are caught in. And because of the population, it's so huge in India yes. that all these problems combined present an, a problem of astronomical proportions. Yes, that's true. So what is AID doing in terms of solutions? What kind of solutions are you offering? So um, I joined AID in 2004. Um, I, I mean, I have partnered with uh, or other nonprofits. I have mm -hmm. had uh, some volunteering experience. Uh -huh. And uh, I can confidently say that AID is one of the very few organizations that tries to uh, attack the roots, root of its problems uh -huh. and give, um, you know, a sustainable uh, solution to, uh, you know, the problem at hand. And not only that, it would be something at a grassroots level mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, it will it'll try to alleviate the problem at uh, the micro level instead mm -hmm. of looking at it at a macro level. And um, another uh, distinct feature of AID is uh, they try to see what would work for that particular community and yes. not try to provide a universal mm -hmm. solution where, uh, you know, what, what works in one area may not work in another mm -hmm. one. So uh, we try to look at it at the community level and see what will work with the community and we encourage community participation. I so see. these are some of the distinct uh -huh. features of AI. So which areas of development work are you addressing? So um, we address uh, health, education, mm -hmm. livelihood, mm -hmm. um, and um, agriculture. Mm -hmm. uh, these are some of the areas. And uh, what we see is, apart from uh, these areas, we find the need to work with the government to constantly uh, revise policies. I see. So, um, where, where there is implementation of RTI, Right to Information Act, or NREGA, mm -hmm. National Rural Employment Guarantee Act. Nice. These are policies that have been, uh, these are acts that have been instituted by the government mm -hmm. of India. 
but sometimes the implementation is a problem so we see that there is a lack of implementation or there is a gap there or there is corruption so we find the need to have a constantly work with the government audit the implementation mm -hmm. so we have partners in india individuals who are doing stellar work along with the government of india uh -huh. and we uh, encourage them by monetarily supporting them as well as you know supporting them in a whatever way possible uh, you know uh -huh. volunteers working with them Mm -hmm. etc okay so you are handling so many different fronts and which is a very effective approach indeed how many projects would you say that you are supporting or have you launched any of your own a aid in general not the bay area chapter um aid in general uh, had uh, has till date supported 345 projects that's a large number yes mm -hmm. <laughs> across 18 states in india okay that's And also pretty good considering yes. there are about what 28 states in yes. india now okay <laughs> yes um apart so uh, in among the 345 projects we have uh, 100 ongoing projects and uh, they are in all the spread across all domains Uh, health education agriculture uh -huh. so we have um, the chapters in us uh, are uh, independent from other chapters so they I have see. the prerogative to choose whatever area of interest okay. they want to you know concentrate on and how many chapters do you have uh, in uh, us we have 36 chapters okay. and in india we have about 6 chapters i see and uh, how do you raise funds uh yes um, being in us uh there is only so much you can do right, and right. one of the significant contributions of aid volunteers is by raising funds for the projects mm -hmm. so we have innumerable partners uh, non profits very uh, doing great work in india mm -hmm. but some uh, one of the biggest problems for them has been lack of funds I and see. we try to fill in that uh part of it by raising funds here mm -hmm. so one of the means is we, we do concerts Uh, I see. you know we do uh, various events like mm -hmm. recently uh eight beria chapter we did uh, carrom tournament and we are planning to have a okay. badminton tournament that's fun and most importantly fun our events. yeah uh -huh. and we have a most uh, important event for the year uh, uh inviting the group Eufor euphoria uh -huh. we are having our rubaru event uh, in november so these are some of the fundraising events and apart from that we have um, we regularly uh, uh, send newsletters to our uh, patrons mm -hmm. and uh, of our work and be, uh, if patrons are impressed they uh -huh. you know subscribe for a regular donation be it monthly or one time or mm -hmm. uh, and how much money would you say the organization has raised so far so approximately yeah since uh, we have been uh, in, uh, you know uh, active since 1981 and mm -hmm. till now we have raised about 1.2 million dollars that's commendable yes and what kind of overhead do you have is it all volunteer based or do you have some employees or admin costs or any other kind of costs fundraising costs yes uh, so um, our overhead is apparent uh, approximately 3.1 uh, percentage of the entire expenses i see and uh, our admin expenses are uh, 2.8 percentage okay. and fundraising expenses are about 1.2 percentage so oh, that's quite small and do you have any employees mm, uh, so um, we don't call them employees okay. we call them jeevan sathis i see so as the name suggests and it is uh -huh. in hindi and mm -hmm. it means a uh, friend for life so but you know what we don't expect them to you know stay with aid for ever but uh, uh, we uh, support individuals who want to contribute in india uh -huh. um, but are they salaried some of these sathis that you are referring yes. to okay yeah but we don't uh, call it salary okay. mainly because these people are very passionate about their work mm -hmm. and they would do it with or without salary i see and we want to encourage their work and mm -hmm. make sure that you know they are not worrying about their financial um, you know uh, financial mm -hmm. needs so we want to give a very small percentage uh, i mean small amount for their uh, you know remuneration so it is more like an honorarium i see i see it's a, a minimal overhead yeah minimal so i also read somewhere about the charity navigator rating that you yes. have four stars which is commendable it speaks volumes and charity navigator is the 
uh, largest mm -hmm. evaluator of charities in yes. the U.S., so that's uh, prestigious. Charity Navigator is actually an independent assessment organization, and uh, they assess charities for their program efficiency and mm -hmm. effectiveness. Okay. And uh, people in the U.S., uh, they, when they want to donate to a charity, they look up to Charity Navigator and right. see what is the rating. Yeah. So uh, yeah, it's quite prestigious. Yes. And you have four stars, which is the highest rating. Yes, that's Great. True. So, uh, also now tell us about the project here in the uh, the chapter here in the Bay Area that you lead. What kind of activities are going on here? Um, so, uh, the chapter in Bay Area is one of the biggest chapters in the I U.S. See. And um, we have about uh, you know 50 active volunteers concentrating on various activities like fundraising projects. Mm -hmm. Etc. And uh, some uh, volunteers uh, uh, contribute during uh, for specific events of mm -hmm. their interest. I see. So um, one of the few of the main activities that we do are fundraising, mm -hmm. uh, projects review and approval. Okay. And um, with respect to projects review and approval, mm -hmm. uh, we follow a methodology called joints project review, mm -hmm. where we try to assess all the projects at the same duration mm -hmm. of uh, at the same time and try to rank them mm -hmm. and uh, that way um, we get the opinions of all the volunteers and give the highest or uh, the largest portion of funds for the highest ranked project. I see. So that way we are able to uh, cross evaluate uh, the project again. Which is important. Uh, yeah. So uh, what other activities are you engaged in here in the Bay Area? Yes, uh, uh, other activities are campaigns, uh, which is uh, another sig uh, significant portion of our activities. I see. In fact, I, I want to tell you about uh, aid uh, motto. It is uh, uh, Sangarsh Seva Nirman. Which means? Uh, Sangarsh is um, um, struggle. Mm -hmm. So it's um, struggle for, uh, you know, human rights or, uh -huh. uh, you know, your um, uh, human rights and justice, social justice. Mm -hmm. um, Seva is service mm -hmm. and Nirman is instituting the solution. Okay, so these campaigns that you mentioned, mm -hmm. are they about social justice, human rights, what are they about? Uh, so the campaigns that we do, uh, some of them in the recent past has been against uh, genetically modified food and oh. how it is not suitable for Indian uh, India uh, right now. Okay. Uh, not only because they are not only they are not safe, but uh -huh. uh, uh, that would mean we rely for seeds from multinational corporations here uh, who have here in the U.S. who have moved to India. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. So we campaigned uh, against genetically modified food, and uh, other campaigns have been against um, uh, the you know for justice in Bhopal. Uh, we okay. have, um, you know, done a campaign for, for justice. Okay, that Bhopal. was about the cyanide poisoning. Yeah, okay. uh, yeah, the Bhopal gas tragedy, gas which happened tragedy. Uh, 26 years back. So, okay. Okay. Uh, e e recently, some of the aid volunteers, mm -hmm. along with uh, you know the justice uh, mm -hmm. uh, for Bhopal uh, group here, okay. uh, we, along with um, the group, went to uh, Indian consulate in uh, San Francisco, and mm -hmm. we campaigned against. Uh, uh, for justice uh, in front of the consulate. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, with respect to other activities, we host a lot of social activists. Uh, some of them have oh. been um, uh, Michael Masguankar. Uh, just this Sunday, we hosted him. Uh, mm -hmm. He's a great activist who uh, who's part, who is, lives by Gandhian principles and uh, who is doing uh, some amazing work in um, mm -hmm. uh, you know uh, Gujarat in the state of Gujarat uh, for uh, an organization called Muzda Collective. So um, Michael Masgunkar, he studied in the U.S. and mm -hmm. he worked here for some time. But after that, he wanted to be part of a rural tribal community and mm -hmm. work for their welfare and development. So he okay. moved to India, Gujarat. Okay. And um, other uh, activists, uh, activists have been Danada Mishra. He is a need uh, volunteer. Uh, he works in Orissa, one of the poorest states in India. I see. And um, we have also hosted P. Sainath, one of um, Maxese award-winning journalists okay. uh, who works for, um, you know, f who, uh, who campaigns a lot for um, uh, farmer suicides. Oh, yeah. Yes. That's a big issue right now. In yes. fact, recently there's a movie out which I have not yes. seen, Peeply Live, and yes, I um, think it's about this issue, yes. farmers committing suicide. Yes. So you are engaged in that too. Yes. I see. I and see. Um, I will talk a little bit yeah, about yeah, yeah, projects sure. too. So. 
some of the and so these are devender sharma is another um, journalist we host okay. he is a very um, a popular journalist who works okay. for social development okay yeah, so there's a lot happening here yes. uh -huh. and uh, tell us about the projects now that the local chapter uh, supports or if you have your own projects here yes uh, i want to talk about three projects uh, okay. health education agriculture okay. uh, categories mm -hmm. so first about education we have a project called swarnivar in uh, um, west bengal mm -hmm. so uh, they have um, a school uh, in uh, west bengal and um has uh, if you will see in the video as well okay uh, so um basically students in india uh, they are being educated for a skill that they will they will not get to use so mm -hmm. um in rural areas uh, most children do not get to go to college after their school education mm -hmm. they choose up some they choose some occupation of their parents or something uh, of their own after uh, their school uh but when they go to the go to work they are not they don't have uh, any skill that okay. they have been taught in school so you are into vocational training yes uh, so swarnivar encourages vocational training mm -hmm. and uh, uh, makes sh make sure that they are equipped with the skills needed for uh, getting to you know getting a job mm -hmm. right after school okay and uh, another project is uh, uh, jss jan swastha sayog Okay. uh this is in chatisgarh mm -hmm. uh, it is again one of the poorest districts mm -hmm. and uh, it is basically a community uh, host, uh community health program okay. where uh, we have a, a hospital with uh, you know very highly trained uh, mm -hmm. highly qualified doctors who have voluntarily chosen to do service for the rural community there okay. and uh, not only that they also train village health workers and um, these village uh, wealth workers uh, travel to surrounding villages mm -hmm. uh, you know in the area and uh, do some uh, you know uh, home uh, you know uh, treatments and uh, diagnosis uh, you know right at the home of these people oh. so uh, this uh, jan swasthya sayog it affects nearly 1000 villages in and around the hospital mm -hmm. uh, the program instituted by them not only that they have done some a uh, breakthrough treatments in uh, tuberculosis uh, which even the government of india is not uh, currently instituting mm -hmm. so where uh, the tuber when someone suffers from tuberculosis when they go to a government hospital uh, you know the treatment may not work for them and they realize that uh, you know jss uh, jans of the uh, treatment is much better and they come here to uh, you know okay. go through the treatment and uh, also uh, leprosy is an eradicated uh, disease in india mm -hmm. but um, jss receives nearly uh, 200 patients every year with leprosy and mm -hmm. government doesn't want to treat them mainly because uh, you know it is an they have already announced it's an eradicated disease okay so but uh, they are working with the government mm -hmm. to change some policies and make sure that these people getting are getting treated okay. meanwhile they also provide treatment okay what else and the third one is the um, the one that we just talked about farmer suicides okay. um so um it is uh, we have a project called chetna vikas uh, mm -hmm. we are uh, doing it in varda district in maharashtra so uh, basically this is one of the you know suicide belt you might call oh. it in uh, mm -hmm. india I so see. where uh, there has been thousands and thousands of suicides um in why Uh, are there so, suicides yes it is a deep rooted problem actually mm -hmm. so uh, bt cotton has been uh, widely promoted in this particular area it is a cotton belt uh, so bt is nothing but uh, biotechnology and uh, it's a genetically modified crop so mm -hmm. initially when the seed was promoted it was said that the yield will be great and all that but uh, first 2 two, two, three years the yield was great uh, mm -hmm. the farmers enjoyed lot of profits but later uh, these uh, uh, genetically modified crops became resistant to some of the uh, you know uh, pests common pests and uh, the uh, because of that the farmers had to use a lot of fertilizers and pesticides external inputs mm -hmm. so um, and even if the yield was decent uh, because they are uh, spending a lot because mm -hmm. their expenditure is huge mm -hmm. they don't uh, enjoy so much so profit so is it that bad that they have to commit suicide um between 1997 and 2002 uh, there were about uh, 17000 farmers suicides in maharashtra alone so basically um, 
uh, what really happens is because they don't get profit and they have to do farming the subsequent year mm -hmm. they borrow a lot from money lenders oh, local money lenders yes. and the, the rates interest rates are exorbitant mm -hmm. uh, it is nearly 25% okay. of 25% uh, interest mm -hmm. rate and uh, so the farmers so they are under debt yeah they are under debt I and see. I, I think uh, you know debt is the primary uh, you know reason why reason. farmers per, oh, perform okay, okay, commit okay. suicides. Okay. And I uh, sure. want to talk about uh, uh, one um, project in aid, uh, aid uh, Eureka project in uh, Tamil Nadu. Okay. Uh, it is also by one of our Jeevan Sathis. Uh, he was an he's a aid volunteer who finished his PhD in India mm -hmm. and moved back to uh, a PhD in US and moved back to India and. Uh, uh, basically, he is doing an education initiative in Tamil Nadu where uh, he is doing uh, Eureka program where okay. it is spread across uh, 10 districts in Tamil Nadu. Okay. So, this is an example where, um, you know, um, many projects we partnered with other non-profits mm -hmm. and NGOs to, mm -hmm. uh, you know, provide solutions. This is uh, in a solution that has been uh, implemented by aid itself. Okay, so you have a lot going on here. You are covering all key areas, education, health, and agriculture. Great to hear about your projects. Yes. Tell yes. us a little bit about the organization, its history. Who was or who were the founders of the organization? Sure. Um, so Ravi Kuchmaji is uh, the founder of the organization. I see. Uh, he and where is he? Uh, he is right now traveling. <laughs> but where so, is he based? Uh, he is uh, based out of India, actually. Oh. And, uh, I thought he was uh, in the U.S. at the time he founded the organization. Oh, at the time he founded okay. the organization, I he see. was in the U.S. Uh, yeah, actually it he was... was he was a, do a doctoral student. He was oh. doing his PhD. Okay, okay, okay. Yes. Yeah, it was quite interesting. I read his note on your website where he talks about how the organization started. It was 1991, like yes. you said, and he s said at that time the interest and activity of the Indo-American community about the development work in India was limited to s shouting slogans or discussions. Yes. So he decided to take it to the next level where there will be some action also. Yes. And it's interesting how he says that he just sent an email out telling people that if they donate $10 a month, they could uh, that would cover the cost of a school yes. in one village in India, and he received such a good response. Yes. Somebody said, "I'll do your accounting." Somebody <laughs> said, "I can give you my time." Someone yeah. said, "I can give you uh, funds," and that was the beginning of this movement. Yes. So, our uh, thanks to <laughs> Ravi. Yeah, it, exactly. Uh, so, as you said. Um, um, most of uh, organizations work is uh, providing immediate charity uh, needs of uh, you know particular school or uh, probably an orphanage in india or something like that mm -hmm. uh, very few organizations work on development initiatives right, where right. Uh, the solution is a sustainable one right, uh, right. and um, so uh, ravi's um, uh, dream was to uh, you know, institute uh -huh. a, um, an organization which can work on sustainable solutions. Mm -hmm. So um, there have been uh, some, uh, you know, some amazing work that has been going on with AIDS since 1991. I see. And uh, uh, basically, in fact, um, I, I, I should tell you that in the movie Swades, where, uh, you know, it's a popular movie, uh, uh -huh. many people would have seen it. So, uh, yeah. popular movie, famous yes. movie. Yes. Right, right. So, right. Um, you know, the protagonist, uh, he uh, provides electricity for the village by using turbines and, uh, you know, um, or from energy from uh, uh, turbines and water. I so, see. Um, actually it was uh, something that they was inspired because of Ravi's uh, work. I in uh, India, uh -huh. and in fact, he was credited in the movie. Oh, uh, yes, in uh, movie Swadesh. Swadesh. Okay, I'll yes. make sure to watch it. Yeah, it is a Shah Rukh Khan movie, so okay. it was quite popular. <laughs> All right. So, anything else you would like to share uh, with us? Yes. Um, Any upcoming events? Yes, one of the big events that we have coming up in November, which is an annual event actually, mm -hmm. is called uh, uh, Rubaru. Uh, this year, uh, for Rubaru, we are inviting the group Euphoria. Over. Okay, and what's the date? Uh, it is uh, November 20th. Okay, and it's a fundraiser? Yes, it is and a fundraiser. How much do you usually raise here in the Bay Area? Uh, we raise about fifty to $60,000. That's pretty good, yeah, especially annually. in this economy. Yes. So, uh -huh. Great. So, uh, how can our viewers get involved or help AID here in the Bay Area or uh, in other chapters? Tell us about that and what's your message for them? Um, 
basically we need a lot of volunteers in a projects team uh, for our fundraising activities and events um mm-hmm. they can visit the website uh, www.bayarea.aidindia.org okay uh, so this is uh, the chapter website okay. and uh, uh, they can find all the information about the upcoming activities upcoming mm-hmm. meetings okay. and uh, also they can uh, contact um, contact us through the website mm-hmm. so um, what kind of help do you need one was with the events you said and fundraising what else anything uh, else also volunteering so yeah. uh, we uh, regularly meet to discuss projects uh, we need uh, so individuals can choose to uh, work with one particular project by mm-hmm. being the project coordinator I and see. follow up with the partner and see what is the recent update uh-huh. so that is also another activity that we do mm-hmm. uh, so um if they want to contact us they can also email us at uh, info i n f o at bayarea.adindia.org okay. so um they can write to us and uh, you know uh, or um, you know visit us during one of the meetings uh, okay, it is an open invitation so. okay and now you are so deeply involved with this tell us about your experience what does it feel like what's your message for our viewers uh actually i have been a volunteer with aid since 2004 mm-hmm. uh, initially i volunteered in uh, aid india uh, in um, uh, aid india chapter and later on i moved to bay area uh i mean because of the projects that they support and because of the entire experience i would i can definitely say it has been very fulfilling and extremely satisfying mm-hmm. uh we have the you know um satisfaction of uh, uh knowing that we are helping out uh, the community right. where we That's grew up that's a great feeling yeah it is uh, our way it is a way to give back to the community where you grew right. up in right. and uh, the amazing thing is uh, you derive more satisfaction when uh, when you volunteer so you actually get more than you give great yes. and that note so chitra thank you so much thank for coming so by much, and telling us about the wonderful work that aid is doing yes mm-hmm. it's a remarkable initiative and i wish you continued success and continued support thank you so much manjula it was great talking with you our guest today was suchitra rama swami president of the bayria chapter of aid a volunteer movement that is committed to sustainable equitable and just development of india The local Bay Area chapter is quite robust with its own projects in the area of education, health and agriculture. To learn more about the organization visit aidindia.org and to watch this show again you may go to chaiwithmanjula.org. Thank you all for joining. I'll be back with another inspiring story about giving and people making a difference. For Chai with Manjula, I'm Manjula Gupta. See you next time.